talk about some stuff that I learned as I grew up, a lot of it through observations, some of it through extracurricular activities, um, science, stuff like that. So uh, I don't know if I should open with this, but Carl Sagan once said the universe is trying to grow consciousness and become self-aware. The problem with this is that, you know, it lacks proof or evidence for some reason, probably because of how humanity acts and what it tries to hide in its consciousness as far as how it treats animals. So I think I've come up with like an interesting, unique way to po possibly like uh, uh, develop um, develop uh, Darwinism a little bit more and at the same time prove Carl Sagan right. So I'm gonna do that in this video, which will be saved. I'm gonna repost this later to YouTube um, and, uh, and it'll be there for viewing eventually on my Periscope, on my personal channel. Um, so. So let's say Carl Sagan was right. Let's say that the universe is trying to grow consciousness. Let's say that it's trying to become self-aware. Well, how would it do that, right? Well, we live on this planet, right, where we're the only intellectual creature that's self-aware, that's walking around, um, you know, living our lives, and, and everything else is kind of our food, and, you know, uh, and, and, you know, we try to ignore the signs of intellect and intelligence that we see, uh, uh, you know, around us. So... The thing for me is, as I grew up, you know, watching animals, I've seen them express not only like, you know, intellect and intelligence, but like consciousness and empathy and awareness and like all kinds of different things that, you know, to me would suggest consciousness and like awareness, being self-aware, you know? Um, and I mean, there's a lot of people doing studies with this stuff now, and I think eventually what they're gonna realize is what we're gonna talk about right now, uh, what I'm gonna say next. Um, and it's basically that, you know, the long and the short of it is we live on a planet where organic life is formed and uh, what we see as life is the processes of a universe trying to become self-aware like Carl Sagan said. So all these different um, animals all, with all these different physical traits and with all these different levels of intellect that we're starting to discover are actually, you know, us at different points and different processes, you know? So not only are they going through a physical evolution where it's survival of the fittest, there's actually a point to this. The point to this is to develop self-awareness, human beings in this case. Um, so, you know, when you look at an animal and you see things that remind you of yourself, what you're actually seeing is that similar quality or trait that that animal shares with you. Uh, I think what's really important about all this is that, um, wow, man, I mean, you know, accepting that animals are intelligent it would mean that people would have to treat them right, not eat them, obviously. There's all these fucking social questions that would come up and it would you know, affect economics and all this shit. But I think what's more important is, is that the point of, like, evolution isn't just to, like, be the best surviving thing on the planet. There's actually a point to it. The point to it is to become, to develop an organic consciousness. So inorganic matter needs organic matter to become self-aware essentially and Carl Sagan thought that and I think he's right and I think that Darwinism and evolution is proof of that I think that everything around us is going through the same process we're going through except for it's going through it in its evolutionary design you know and I don't think that's a hard concept to understand and I don't think that's really crazy but it does get a little bit crazy because what about if the planet and the solar system were all part of this process what about the galaxy that we're in? What about if that was part of this process? What if, why, you know, like for the biggest, the biggest of the smallest molecule is all part of this process? You know, essentially when you look at things that are happening, you know, on this planet, people for a long time have not been able to explain them. And with science now, we're starting to understand they're not just random occurrences. These are things that are happening, um, you know, for a reason, and it has to do with the planet and its weather systems and its ecosystem. And, you know, if you look at this planet and being in this condition, uh, you know, for this reason of growing organic life when everything is right, you have to wonder what kind of part is being played by the universe around it. Because if the planet is here for us or whatever would develop as, you know, an organic self awareness, then what's the solar system here for? Well, scientists are starting to discover now that how solar systems are set up and the way things are built, planets tend to protect each other when they're in a certain area. Well, it seems, or, you know, set up in a certain way. So the thing is, is 
these things that are set up in a certain way just happen to protect things that fall into what they consider to be this, you know, Goldilocks zone, which is just this sweet spot where life may exist. And it's it's really funny that, you know, those sweet spots are positioned in solar systems, it seems, that provide it and afford it a, a protection. So, you know, in my head, I'm, I'm thinking that the point of existence is self-awareness and that life will exist. Oh, this conversation just got really fucking heavy. Okay, seriously though, not that, not that life exists because that's a whole other conversation. I think that almost like, you know, uh, fucking, was it planetary evolution, like almost, you know, uh, and Big Bang Theory, if you believe it, uh, which I do to a degree, but I have my own theory on it. Uh, but what's crazy is if you were to believe that, then you would almost have to believe that life doesn't exist somewhere else uh, because not enough geological time has passed for those processes to occur. Not to say we're the center of the universe, but we're certainly in an area, if the Big Bang were true, where that energy had been dissipated to the point where the biological process, geological process could occur and life would form. So not to get off topic, but um, while we're having all this happen, you know, I think w what we're having is the development of galactic ecosystems. So basically, oh, I wanted to touch on this other point, was that life will occur. Whether it's happened before, it's happening now, or it'll happen in different places, the point of existence and life is self-awareness. And inorganic material will always try to uh, develop itself into consciousness. So, you know, basically what you have are planetary planets basically being incubators and when all the combinations of everything are right and that planet is protected properly by the solar system around it and that solar system falls into place with the galaxy it's in, you end up with life, consciousness, awareness, the question why. Which is really cool because I mean apparently everybody knows this but I don't think that they do. And uh, I know it sounds a little bit crazy but I mean, you know, life is a pretty crazy fucking trip. And uh, all this started with me talking about cats and dogs and consciousness and awareness and animals. And I'm going to get back to that right now. So basically the point of that conversation was to elaborate on how uh, intellect is developing around us, like physical qualities develop around us, uh, you know, and that we may end up with someday intellectual life on this planet that is not ours, you know, because there are all these other animals that are on uh, these different paths, or I shouldn't say different paths, that are on the same path that we are on, but taking different routes to get there. So it's not to say that life can only form, uh, you know, or intellectual life and expression can only form, uh, you know, like this, who knows, dolphins may start communicating with us one day, something else may grow limbs and come out of the woods, who knows. But anyway, so, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to get that out there. Oh, oh, some more proof, like, things that I've been picking up, you know, I was watching the show the other day and it was called The Mats or something like that, it's on Netflix, it's a documentary, and it was really interesting because... In this documentary, uh, he talks about how all animals use math in order to exist. And then without math and doing that, you know, we couldn't exist. And this just reminded me of everything that I've seen, you know. And when I start combining empathy and emotion in your dog's eyes, your cat's need for you to feed it, um, you know, cats waiting for my wife every night at the same time because they're aware of when she'll be back and what they get from her. Uh, you know, these things are really difficult to ignore. And, you know, these things are all like serious, you know, traits of intellect. And I, I, I just think that there's this whole like, you know, portion of Darwinism that's undiscovered, you know, because of human arrogance and their unwillingness to see the power of consciousness and intellect around them. Yeah, I mean, it really, it blows my mind to think that, uh, that the point of life is life. It becomes so much more precious and serious. We all get a chance, we all get a turn. You know, the universe will continue to go on and develop in the way that it does and other life will form and maybe they'll get a longer crack at it. We've had about 40,000 years of a uh, good uh, awakening or whatever you want to call it. Like I said, I think it's really important that, you know, as people we learn to respect animals and understand that they're afraid to they're going through the same processes that we're all going through and we need to love them like we love each other and we need to look after them like we look after each other and we need to respect the planet while we're here because we're only here for so long you know there is an imbalance in the creation of life and unfortunately for that due to the chaos nothing is ever permanent thanks for watching